It's late Tuesday evening on this June 4th, and the main focus in the tropics continues to be this tropical low located in the southeast gulf. Earlier today, the Hurricane Center decided to cancel the flight that was scheduled to investigate the system, although we still have a new flight that is now scheduled for Wednesday afternoon. You can see that the 48-hour development prospects have also been increased to 40%. The latest visible satellite animation reveals that we still have a very broad area of low pressure with multiple vortices swirling about a primary low center and you can see that much of the overall circulation is still exposed with much of the convection still occurring well to the east and we really don't expect this to change all that much because conditions are only going to be marginally favorable at best throughout the forecast period so we're not expecting the convection to fully wrap around the center if anything some very weak organization into perhaps no more than a tropical depression or a very ugly looking name storm would be the most that we can expect out of this system either way the overall forecast philosophy hasn't changed the main threats will be heavy rainfall for the Florida Peninsula along with the chance of isolated tornadoes if you happen to be a Gulf Coast resident and you're worried about this system developing into a significant hurricane, please don't do so because this is going to be one of the uglier of the named storms of the 2013 season, and that's if it even makes it to named storm status. As we take a look at the regional water vapor, you can see that much of the Gulf is still being overwhelmed by a lot of dry air in the mid to upper levels. Now what this graphic does not show is that we do have a lot of low level moisture, and that extends all the way up until about 700 millibars, which is the low to mid levels, and that'll be just enough for the system to potentially get its act together, and the Hurricane Center is going to go ahead and investigate this one tomorrow with the Hurricane Hunters, if it still looks like it's on the uptrend here on satellite imagery by tomorrow morning. Uh, either way, though, it looks like the best chances for development into potentially a named system would be Wednesday on into Thursday, with the center crossing the coast somewhere near the Big Bend region of Florida as we go into Thursday night and the early morning hours of Friday. The consensus among the tropical model suite would be for a track much closer towards the Florida Panhandle, somewhere between Pensacola and Apalachicola, but these models are often not overly accurate, and it also looks like the position or the initial position has been shifted too far to the north and towards the west. If we had a spaghetti model graphic showing some of the, the more accurate dynamical models, the consensus would be a little closer towards the Big Bend and areas just north of Tampa. I should also continue to reiterate that since the conditions are only going to be marginally favorable with a lot of westerly wind shear involved, even if the center were to track closer towards the Florida Panhandle, much of the heaviest precipitation, along with the risk of isolated tornadoes, will still likely be centered over the Florida Peninsula. The latest graphics made by the Tampa Weather Service show that the forecast rainfall amounts in that area could be in excess of 5 to 7 inches, with locally heavier amounts through Saturday and another risk will be the offshore seas building up to 10 feet by Thursday and of course you're going to be dealing with the risk of rip currents so it's going to be highly advised for everyone to stay out of the water as conditions are only going to worsen during the middle and latter half of the week. The main hazards being advertised by the Key West office will be the potential for rainfall in upwards of 1 to 2 inches per hour with some of the heavier thunderstorms and along with those thunderstorms that are moving in from southwest and northeast you will also have the potential for offshore water spouts. We are expecting the number of flood watches to also increase here over the next one to two days, but much of the Tampa and west coast of Florida area is now already under a flood watch as of earlier this afternoon. Finally, here's a look at the ECMWF sea level pressure and precipitation forecast, and as we go into the next 24 and 48 hours, we can still see the representation of a very lopsided area of low pressure. The center of circulation is expected to be to the south of Fort Walton Beach and Destin, Florida as we work our way into early Thursday afternoon, with much of the convection already beginning to overspread much of central Florida, including Melbourne, Tampa, Orlando, northward into Ocala. And then finally, as we work our way into late Thursday night into Friday morning, the center of circulation is crossing near Cedar Key, Florida, and depending on the exact movement and direction of the surface low, the threat of heavy rainfall and an isolated tornado or two may extend into the coastal segments of South Carolina and North Carolina. So as of right now, I would place the odds of this tropical low developing into a subtropical or tropical named storm at around 50%. 
but that doesn't really change what the main risk will be and that will of course be the heavy rainfall if you haven't figured that out by now. So this will not be one of the blockbuster storms of 2013, but for those residents that are living in a low-lying and flood-prone area, this could still be a big deal. So that's why we're going to continue to follow things here at 28storms.com. And of course, please go ahead and check out hurricanes.gov for the official updates from the National Hurricane Center.